Welcome back to another video from American Original Dollhouse Miniatures and More. Uh, today we're going to be working on the Prairie Church Birdhouse Kit. Uh, before you get started, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need some sticky one inch masking tape. Uh, the cheaper tapes tend to be the stickiest. A number two Phillips screwdriver, a damp rag to clean excess glue, uh, a scissors or a utility knife. In this case, I'm using an X-Acto knife. Also, you're gonna need a 16 ounce cup or a coffee mug works just fine too. And optional, you're gonna need either a ruler or a tape measure. If you don't have either, uh, in the insert inside of the instructions, you'll find a cutout uh, of a ruler so you can cut that out and use that. Uh, with that, let's get started. Okay, before we start building the birdhouse, we are gonna go through the box and make sure that everything is there and accounted for. On the back of the assembly instructions, you're gonna find a complete list of, of materials. So just go through that, check that everything's there. You're gonna have a bag of material, a bag of uh, parts. Just make sure that all the parts are there uh, and then we can get started. So go ahead, hit pause and go check your box. All right, we're ready to start building the birdhouse. The first four pieces that we're gonna start with are gonna be the front and the back. Uh, the front is with the hole, the back, and then the two sides. We will place the two sides down and you're going to apply four pieces of, of the masking tape to both the front and the back. To save time, I have pre-cut the pieces. Okay, I've applied tape to both the front and the back, flipped the, the two pieces over, and now we're ready to start install and start to glue up the sides. So you wanna make sure that the side, you're working on, you're gluing the correct side, that the miters line up, and you want the bottom of the panels to be perfectly flush. The top, there, the sides are actually a little bit shorter than the fronts, the front and the back, so there's no problem there, but you wanna make sure that the bottoms line up. Uh, perfectly flush and that the sides line up. So we're gonna apply tape, sorry, we're gonna apply glue to the correct edge. And just one thin bead of glue is all it takes. I use my finger as a guide and the, the glue should be about the thickness of a grain of rice or maybe slightly thinner. I don't know if, if you can see that, but it does not take much glue. Uh, and then we're gonna line up the front. We're gonna tilt it in to squeeze the glue out towards the inside. So we'll line up the bottom, line up the sides, and then rotate it into place. And then that way any glue seepage will come out on the inside. Uh, another thing I didn't mention is a toothpick comes in handy to wipe to get any of the excess glue out of the nooks and crannies. Uh, it's not so important on the sides, but it will be later on. So now we're gonna push forcefully down on the side while forcefully lifting up on the tape. And that is gonna hold everything in place for you. One last chance to check to make sure that everything is flush and that nothing has moved. And we will glue the other panel and I'm gonna hold this in as I do it. So make sure now we're gluing the right side so the miters line up. So I'm gonna flip that panel. And again, just a thin bead of glue across the entire surface. And again, we're gonna tilt Make sure the bottoms and side are flush. And rotate in. Trickiest part is to hold everything together until you get all four pieces on. Again, we're gonna push down and lift up on the tape. Pushing down and lifting up on the tape. Finally, we'll put two beads of glue 
on both sides that are sticking up. And we will flip the front over, line up one side and the bottom, and drop it into place. And now just make sure that the sides and the bottoms line up. I know you can't see, but I will show. Okay, after that's complete, we'll set the birdhouse aside. We'll set the body aside, I should say, and allow that to dry while we continue working with step number two. So we'll be back to do step two. You have three parts here, you got two, porch sides and then a porch front. Uh, this entire structure will be hidden behind the trellis uh, so it's actually not visible. We're going to lay the porch face down and the two sides. We're going to apply a thin bead of glue to the short side and remember about the thickness give or take of a grain of rice. And if you put too much on that's not a big deal just Take a little off. And that's what our damp rag is for. And then we're gonna flip these two over and this will get applied to one side of the porch front. We just wanna make sure to line up the top, the bottom, and the sides. So just push it firmly in place. And we'll push the other one into place and then I'm just going to apply pressure for about 15 seconds until the glue sets up enough for me to, to move it out of the way. And we'll see you back for step number three. All right, moving on to step number three, we're going to build the porch roof or assemble the, port, the porch roof. Uh, you're going to take the two porch halves, porch roof halves uh, that have the miters, place the miters down so the short side down and place the two edges together so they're fairly tight together you shouldn't have any gap and the top and the bottom should be perfectly matched or perfectly lined up then we're going to apply starting from the center apply two pieces of tape and carefully push down because if you push on the center it's going to the roof is going to want to flip it's going to want to close it or it's going to want to flip down apply the second piece of tape again starting from the outside and just gently we're going to flip it upside down so the valley is facing up and apply again a very small bead of glue you're going to apply the glue towards the bottom of the v um, so as we push it together it's going to squeeze out towards the bottom of the roof so a, f a slightly heavier bead this time just maybe a hair more than the, the grain of rice. So just a little bit more, it doesn't take a whole lot, but. And then we're gonna close the two halves together slowly until everything is tight. And we should have a perfect joint at the top and also a perfect joint on the inside. So it should be nice and tight. And then to hold it together, you can either use, a, if you have a rubber band, you can use a rubber band or a piece of tape also works just fine. From there, over to the other side. You don't have to pull it real tight. You just want to make sure that the joint is closed completely on the top and the bottom. And that's it for the porch roof. We'll set that aside. All right, we're moving on to step number four and possibly my favorite step is the steeple roof. You're going to find the four steeple roof pieces and we're going to lay those out so the bottoms and tops are flush and the sides are tight together. So you're going to do all four of them. Make sure the alignment is absolutely perfect. Then we're going to apply two pieces of tape running across. Now again like as in the, the porch roof you want to start with the center of each of the pieces and then gently press the tape into place. And then we're going to do a second. 
piece of tape on the inside there, making sure that we stay away from the, the gluing edge. All right. Once we got that tape on, we're going to double check the fit of other, or make sure all the seams are tight. So just close the roof, pull the last joint together, and double check to make sure that everything lines up. Check the bottom, make sure all four sides of the bottom line up and make sure that the top comes to a point, which it does. We are ready to apply glue. Lay it back down so the V's are facing up. And we're gonna do, again, the lower part of the valley, the lower part of the V on the three inside pieces. And again, just a little bit heavy, heavier than the bead, or I'm sorry, than our normal bead or a grain of rice. Again, at the bottom of the V. And then the last one, we'll do the center of one of the outside pieces. And we can carefully fold everything up. Start with the two outsides and then fold the last two sides together. And we will use our tape to pull the seam, pull the joint tightly together. So go ahead and stretch the tape. It does a pretty good job at pulling back. So, and then one at the top, hold the tape in place while you pull it. And like I said, that tape stretches pretty good. So it really pulls everything together. So that's it for the steeple roof. All right, now that we got our four steeple sides glued together, we're gonna place the steeple upside down in our cup and we're gonna install the, the base block, which is the square block with the tapers. And that's just a matter of applying glue to all four sides. In the middle of the piece. So you have glue on all four sides running about the middle. And drop that inside of the opening. Tap it, press it down, and make sure that it is flush. And it should just automatically lay flush. That's it. We'll put the steeple aside, let that dry, and we'll come back to step number five. All right, continuing to step number five, we're gonna work on the base of the steeple. The steeple body, you're gonna have four parts. You're gonna have two sides, which are the small sides with the miter tops, or I'm sorry, mitered bottoms, the 45 degrees. And then you're gonna have a front and a back. And you wanna make sure that the saw marks are, on, are gonna go on the inside of the roof. So the first one that we're gonna work on, saw marks are gonna be up, and we're gonna glue the two blocks so that the miters are lined up. So we'll flip those upside down, apply glue to this side. And again, about the thickness of a grain of rice, staying away from the bottom of the top. And I'm gonna line up the outside and the bottom of the miter and then I'm going to lean it in or rotate it down so that the squeeze out, the glue squeeze out, will come on the inside of the piece and not the outside. Again, with the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line up the outside and the bottom and lean it in. Then before everything sets up, we're gonna apply glue to the inside now of the other side, sides, sides of the side. Again, with the saw cuts, this time facing down, we will place the other front back piece on. Okay, we'll squeeze everything together and place it so the V is down and we're just gonna push down on the two side pieces and make sure that they are flush. And then we will line it all up. Pull everything together. And if it's off 
a little bit. You'd prefer that the front and back pieces are sticking out just a little bit. You don't want it a whole lot, but that way you can sand that small piece to make it fit. Now we're going to tape it and one piece of tape across the whole thing ought to work. And make sure everything's tight. And I'm just going to check the alignment. Okay. And I'm going to put one extra piece of tape on there just to pull that. All right, we got the steeple roof and the steeple body assembled. We're going to set those aside with the rest of the parts, allow them to dry. While they're doing that, we're going to take the time to do step number six, which is to cut out all the pieces that we're going to need uh, later on. Along with these pieces is the ruler uh, that I mentioned earlier. So let's take the time now and cut these pieces out. We'll be back for step number seven. All right, I finished step six, which was cutting out the template pieces. And we'll talk more about those as we need them. But I cut out those pieces, we'll set those aside, and we'll move on to step number seven, which is putting the roof, the main roof uh, structure together. Again, this is gonna be similar to the porch roof and the steeple roof. We are going to flip these so the short side is on the bottom, the long side is at the top, the valley, the two tops meet each other and line up top and bottom so they're even top and bottom and we will apply four pieces of tape again working from the center to the inside. All right, we've got the four pieces of masking tape holding the roof together. We will check the fit of the roof, make sure everything is tight, close the roof, check that the gap on the top is nice and tight. If not, we need to make adjustments now, and it's not. So we are going to, we are gonna tighten this up a little bit. So that sections meet a little better and that should be good. We'll try it again and now we have a nice tight roof peak and also the inside lines up nicely. We'll flip it upside down, we'll flip it the other way and again run a bead of glue at the bottom of the V starting just a little bit back, about a quarter inch back from the front, all the way to about a quarter inch from the back. And again, we're gonna close this carefully until the pieces line up. And then our body's been sitting long enough that it's dry, so we're gonna use the body to make sure that the roof is correct and we have a little bit of a gap so we're going to tape the roof we will run a piece of tape and the front edge pull the roof tight to the other side and we actually have a good fit, so we'll leave it like that. And we can set the roof aside now, allow that to dry, and we'll move on to step number eight when we get back. All right, I've removed the tape from the body of the birdhouse. We're gonna install now the porch. And for that, we're gonna need the porch alignment template. So if you put the porch down, make sure everything's on a flat surface, put the porch down with tape on the back 
of the alignment template, we're going to place that. Let's see. And tape that in place. And the two lines, you're going to see two lines on the inside, two lines on the outside, two lines on the inside. The outside is obviously the edge, the sides of the house. The inside is where you're going to line the porch up. So we'll flip the porch up, apply glue to the inside of the sides, both of them, staying away from the top and the bottom. So apply your rice size bead of glue, flip down. And again, we're working on a flat surface and we're just going to press Press the porch in place and make sure that any of the uh, glue squeeze out gets cleaned up right away. In this case, it all went on the inside, so we're fine. That's it. We can remove the template carefully so we don't move the alignment, so we don't change the alignment. Okay, with the porch base installed, we're going to attach the porch floor. And for this, we're going to use our paper ruler that is supplied. And there's a PF on the ruler. That's going to be the center of your porch. So we're going to make a little pencil mark at the very back of the porch floor on that mark. And the next mark we're going to make is the center. of the front, which is three inches. So we'll make a little mark at the three inch line there. And those two marks will line up and we know we're center. And you don't have to worry about the pencil mark because that's going to be covered by the bird door. So being careful not to move the house or disturb the porch, uh, run a bead of glue on the inside all the way around and on the back side where we have our pencil mark, just a thin bead towards the bottom of that. And we will place that lining up the pencil marks. And put that down and just check Without lifting it, check for any squeeze out. We should be just fine. And we're fine. We'll set this aside uh, for 30 minutes, let this dry, and we'll move on to step number nine. All right, with our steeple roof still in the cup, we're going to attach the base to the steeple roof. I took the time and sanded everything flat because it's a little easier to do it when it's off. So we're going to check the fit, make sure it fits in there nice. And we will flip it up. A bead of glue all the way around on the inside of the steeple base. And just a little bit more. And it doesn't matter which way, it's all the same. We will center that. All right, we'll set the steeple roof aside, allow that to dry, and we'll see you back for step number 10. All right, step number 10, we're going to take the time now and sand uh, some of the parts that are going to get attached uh, as we go, as we move on. Uh, so the door, the, mainly the parts that are in the bag, and then also the windows. Uh, you don't want to sand the side that's going to get attached to the birdhouse itself. You'll notice that one side is shiny and another side, or one side is smoother than the other side. Pick the best side to face out. Um, that goes for all of the, the smaller parts. Also, do not sand the tops or the bottoms of the post rails. Uh, we don't wanna sand those. And do not sand any parts that are gonna get glued. So with the railings, the edges, do not sand those. Uh, we will take the time. I will 
sand these and I will be back for step number 11. All right, now we're gonna install the porch posts. We'll start with the back two porch posts. And one of the templates that we cut out earlier was called post mount. And that is to tell us how far from the edge of the house to put the post. So I put a little piece of tape, I just curled up a piece of tape on the back, line up the edge, and that'll tell us where to put the post. Now you wanna make sure that you got the right post. The, the angle of the post must match the roof line. That's where the porch roof is gonna go. Um, also, I like to use the door as a little reference to check to make sure that that uh, post is straight up and down. Um, that door is dead on, so that'll give you a good idea. Once we get that lined up, we'll actually leave the door there. We can apply glue. Again, a thin, ble a thin bead of glue to the center of the porch posts halves. And again, staying away from the top and the bottom. And actually, I guess you can you can go to the bottom. So we will line that up. Check to make sure it is straight up and down, which it is, and press that in place. Now the next steps as we move along now are gonna take a little longer because you're gonna to have to allow time for each step to dry. Um, so we're not gonna move as fast or you won't move as fast as you did in the first few steps. And we will move the post mount to the other side. Again, make sure that we got the right angle. We're putting glue on the right side, the correct side. And a thin bead of glue down the center. Lean it into place. Again, we'll use the door to make sure we are straight up and down, which we are. Press it in place. And we can set that aside to dry. All right, that's it for the rear posts. We will set this aside, allow it to dry before continuing with the porch roof install. We'll see you back for the next step. Okay, now that the porch posts have had some time to dry, we can, and the porch itself, we can install the porch roof. Uh, in the porch <coughs> roof, there's three points that you want to check for alignment. That would be the peak, you want to align with the peak of the main roof and the two sides that rest on top of the post should be, should fit snugly together like so. And everything is tight. We'll verify that it's tight and put some glue onto the porch roof. Now we're gonna stand the church up why the porch roof dries so it doesn't shift around. So we'll stand, the, stand it up. And again, I know you're not gonna be able to see this, but we are going to line up with the porch posts and with the peak itself. Then just wipe up any excess glue. And there we go, we'll set that aside for a few minutes, allow that to dry. Okay, now we're gonna install the steeple windows onto the steeple body. So you wanna make sure that you apply glue to the correct side, which will be the flat side. And a very, very small amount just on the top and the bottom 
and maybe just a little bit in the center slat. And you want to center that on the V side. So where the V is, one's going to go on the, on the front and one on the back side of the V. And you want to center it between the top of the V and the bottom of the steeple roof itself. So get that in about the center and make sure that the slats are horizontal. Hold it in place for just a couple of seconds. And we can flip it over and do the other side. And then you can look from the side and make sure they're at the same height. And that they look good. And that's it. We'll uh, set that aside, let that dry, and move on to the next step. All right, in order to speed things up, I've applied a clamp to, to hold the roof in place. You don't need to do this. You can just allow it to dry. But I need to keep moving here. So next is the installation of the porch railings. The larger part goes towards the bottom. And we're going to use for a spacer we're going to use one of the church windows, which is a quarter inch, and we want that a quarter inch off the bottom. So, now this is one of the more difficult steps. We want to install both the post and the railing at the same time so that they match up. Uh, otherwise, they may not line up in the end. So, We just want to check it first and make sure everything looks good. There is a template piece that you can use for this. Um, it's titled a porch post and that just goes on the corner and it kind of guides you to where to put the base of the, of the post. I don't use it though. I think it's easier to do it without. So we'll lay it back up. Put the church window in and we're going to apply glue to the one side that goes to the back porch and just a dot of glue is all it takes. Center it on the rear po porch post. And then we're going to apply glue to the front of the railing and to the top and bottom of one of the porch posts. Now this is the most difficult part I think. It's getting this in the right place before setting it down because you don't want to set the glue down too soon. And you just kind of got to line everything up, play around with it until you get it right. Make sure the top is flush and just kind of eyeball it and make sure that everything is lined up correctly. That looks good. We'll set that again aside for a few minutes to allow that to set up before removing the window. And we'll see you back for the other side. All right, the first railing has had time to dry. I've removed the window from that side. And now we're going to put the window in on the other side. And in order to get it so it's not in the way, you want to tilt it in like I have. Just make sure that gives us enough room. That's enough room. Okay, and then just repeat the, the steps that we did the first time. Larger part, the round part towards the bottom. Start with one side. And I'm just gonna apply glue to the other side now. Place. 
apply glue to the top and the bottom of the deck post and again line it up like we did the first one and, and just take time to center everything line it up and make sure that everything is straight and tight and centered. We have the other side installed. We'll set that aside and let it dry. And we'll be back. All right, I'm gonna combine the next two steps. That would be applying the trellis and the church windows. So since we gotta work on one side, we'll do the trellis and the windows at the same time. The window template that we cut out earlier uh, shows the edge of the house and then the edge of the window and the placement of the window. So you wanna line that up with the bottom of the house and with the side of the house and then the window will sit like so. And to do the other side, just simply flip that around to the other side. And while I'm at it, the trellis may have to be sanded to make sure that it is flush with the bottom. You don't want it extending beyond the bottom. So if it does extend beyond the bottom, sand until it is flat or it is flush with that bottom. I have already done that. I've sanded all three pieces, so we're ready to glue those on. And just apply a real thin bead right down the center of each trellis piece. And a dot on the last one. Flip that. And glue that in place. Now that I'm gonna take the dullest side of the window and that'll be my downside. And I'm just gonna apply glue to the bottom, to the side, up the center, and into the little V. Again, centering it on our window template and just kind of eyeball to make sure that it looks straight up and down. Clean up any glue squeeze out. And we'll flip the little template piece over to the other side. And make sure again it is flush at the bottom, flush with the side, and we will glue another window in place. And now since we have to flip it over onto the side, we'll let these windows uh, set up for a few minutes. While that's happening, I am going to glue the front piece on. So just a little bit of glue on every slat that will touch the surface. And center that. Center that to the front, like so. Then we're also gonna install one of the corner blocks. And again, we want to make sure that that is flush with the bottom, and it should be, which it is. And we're just going to apply a little bit of glue to the edge of the trellis piece that it will contact. Push that in place. Okay. 
All right, we'll let this set up and we will be back. We'll do the other side. Along with the trellis and the church windows, I'm also gonna install uh, two of the screw blocks. Uh, these will go about an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the house. So you want them an eighth of an inch up or just a little bit less. And we wanna make sure we apply plenty of glue to these because they will hold the bottom in. And a little bit of squeeze out is all right because we have that eighth of an inch to play with. Again, a good amount of glue. And do the other side. All right, now I can set this aside. We'll let it dry before flipping it over. Okay, why well, the first half of the windows, the trellis and the screw blocks are drying, we'll set that aside and install the steeple. The steeple goes two inches from either side. The, the, it's from the front, so you want to mark two inches using our little handy piece of paper. And you can adjust it. It doesn't have to be exactly two inches. If you like it a little further to the front or a little further to the back, that's just fine too. Um, so let's apply. Apply glue to all the edges. And try and keep it on the more on the inside so we avoid the squeeze out. Again, I'm just going to mark, I'm going to eyeball two inches. and place my steeple there. All right, the windows, trellis, and the blocks have dried enough now that I can flip the house over onto the other side and install the two windows on the other side, the trellis, the corner piece, and then the two screw blocks. Basically just the same as we did on the other side. I'm gonna start with the trellis and Again, I want to apply glue to every piece that's going to come in contact. Very small amount of glue. Line it up with the bottom. And we'll put the screw block in and just a drop of glue on all the pieces that it will contact. Okay, I finished installing the windows, finished installing the, tress, the trellis, and the last of the screw blocks. The main part of the birdhouse is done now. You can glue the roof on now if you would like. I prefer to leave the roof off until after I've painted the birdhouse. If you're not gonna paint your birdhouse, then you can put the roof on now. But like I said, I'm not gonna install the, the roof yet. All right, one of the last steps would be to install the bird door and you want to make sure that all of the parts are sanded well before installing this you want to make sure that the hole is smooth on the inside the outside and also the door on the inside and the outside any sharp edges can damage birds feathers if you are going to use it as a as a real bird house um, so make sure that those are are sanded smooth and the door is important because it does add a little bit of protection for the birds. Uh, so we just want to, it doesn't take a whole lot of glue for this. And you just want to make sure that the door, that the opening is centered over the hole and you might have to raise the door up a little bit. 
so that it is so that all of the opening is uncovered by the door. You don't want anything to be uh, covered up and just eyeball it to get it center, which is what I'm trying to do here. And there we have it. So it is just a little above the base. So that's it, we'll set that aside, we'll let that dry. And we will install the base, the final step. Okay, now for the final step, installing the base. I put the four number two Phillips screws in and I'm gonna drive them in until they are about 3 16 to a quarter of an inch beyond the bottom. And do all four of them the same. And you don't want to do this step until the glue, until the screw blocks have completely set up. So you want to let those sit at least overnight before installing the base. I have a second house that I will use to demonstrate. Put the screws facing up, the base facing up. And then we're going to line up the base so it is center in all directions which appears to be right there and once you have it center then we're just going to push down forcefully so that the screws indent into the blocks and once we've done that we will carefully flip it Gently set it on the top and we're just going to drive one in and then we'll drive a second one in and you may have to screw them in a little bit, back them out and then screw them in again to get the base tight and that's good. And just repeat that for all four. And there you have it. The base is on there tight and the roof is ready to go. It's not going to get glued on, but the roof is ready. When it comes time to glue the roof, just apply glue to the front and the back piece only, not to the sides, just to the back and the front. Uh, center the roof over the opening and you're done. Okay, that completes the birdhouse. I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed building your birdhouse and I would greatly appreciate if you would like us, subscribe, help other people find our birdhouses, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell please tell everyone uh, if you have any comments please address them below also on the back of the uh, instruction or assembly manual you will find my email address you can email me with any questions I answer all my emails so please any questions email us and we'll see you next time